Boy, I don't know if you've been following this story out of Flint, Michigan. The obvious question is, could that happen here? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Welcome in to my state of mind. It is an honor to have you aboard on this Friday evening. As you know, if you've been watching the show for any length of time, and so many of you have started and have, and I appreciate that, uh, that we kind of skip the issues of the day and kind of expand on a larger topic on Friday nights. And this one is maybe not in your, you know, stream of conscience, unless you've been watching the national news, but once you do, you've got to ask yourself the question, if there, why not here? I don't know that my guests can answer that question specifically, but we ought to be talking about the safety of our water because we take it for granted. And that's the conversation, water. Look at this headline. The New Yorker, the crisis in Flint, Michigan goes deeper than the water. And here's a CBS story to help you understand what this conversation is all about. The parents of children in Flint, Michigan, have good reason to be worried. There's real danger that the injury is going to be permanent and lifelong in them. Dr. Philip Landrigan is Dean of Global Health at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. He's been studying the effects of lead since the 70s. The problem here is that no level of lead is safe. Even low levels of lead, especially if, if exposure to low levels continues over many months, is going to cause some degree of brain damage to at least some of the children who are exposed. And that's a, that's a big deal. Exposed children are at risk for a number of problems, including lower IQ scores, developmental delays, and behavioral issues such as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Even after lead exposure stops, the effects can last for years or even be permanent. In Flint, Michigan, a major challenge will be identifying which children are at risk, then tracking them for many years for evidence of injury. These children are going to be injured for life. Uh, they're going to need remedial education. They're going to need educational enrichment programs. There are kids who may be prevented from functioning at their full level. There are no known effective drugs to reverse the developmental damage caused by lead. Something called chelation therapy can remove lead from the body, but so far it has not been helpful in treating the behavioral or neurological problems caused by lead exposure. You know, the health issues alone, unbelievable. Right. Never mind, how would you sell your house in Flint, Michigan right now, huh? I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure you can. Topher Hamble is the director of real estate in Rhode Island. Uh, advocacy and policy for Save the Bay. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate Thanks for it. having me, Dan. Before we, we, we break this whole horror show down and just get your perspective on it, I don't know that you can answer the question, could this happen here? I think the answer is, of course it could happen here. But Save the Bay is a really profound organization in the state. Talk to me about what you guys are up to these days. Sure. We've, we've been around since 1970. We're a citizens group, a member-based group, and our mission is very simple, and that's to protect and restore Narragansett Bay. So we work on a lot of the major issues that affect Narragansett Bay and the land area that drains into it. We also educate thousands of Rhode Island kids and Massachusetts kids on marine science, and, and uh, we help them meet their curriculum demands as well. So we've been, been at it for a long time, and we'll be at it for a long time. Uh, define for me what Save the Bay is in terms of its level of advocacy. Is it, you know, educational? Vigilante, something <laughs> somewhere between those two spectrums, depending, right? Yeah, we are. Um, education is part of advocacy um, because there's a lot of awareness raising to be done if people are to really engage in the issues and solve them. So, right. um, but we work very hard on on um, policy. Um, I represent Save the Bay in the State House, so it's our job to get good laws passed and prevent bad laws, bad bills from becoming law. Um, we work at all levels, at the city and town level, at the state level, and at the federal level with our delegation on, on policy matters, clean water. Currently, we are really pressing the governor hard to actually um, turn the tide on environmental enforcement. There's been a decade of erosion in environmental enforcement. And um, the DEM and CRMC have uh, lost resources, and they need to get them back. We can't know about problems like Flint unless we have people out there investigating and responding okay. to citizen concerns. All right. What's your take on what's happening in Flint, Michigan? Uh, it's beyond tragic. I mean, tragic doesn't even cover it. Um, I, I heard one reporter from a national, uh, on a national column 
today that I read call it criminal negligence on the part of the government. Um, mm. But um, it just sh should never happen. And um, so it, it's just, it's awful, it's offensive. Um, and the problem is that, as we saw in that report, we can't undo damage that's been done to children. And I think that's maybe the worst part of all. Yeah, I, we, we'll talk more about the government response. W what's your position on, uh, what's your take on the health of our water supply? Um, it is so taken for granted. Sure. You know, we have time, every once in a while, I have to see something from a third world country, a story, a, a online piece, a tweet, a movie, or, to bang back into my head that when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning, this is pretty cool. And we trust a lot about that material that's coming through the pipes. We do, we, we trust, we take it for granted. Um, I worked in West Africa as a Peace Corps volunteer in Sierra Leone building water wells and pit latrines in very remote places. And I, up in, I grew up in Rhode Island. I never thought about where my water came from and where it went. I never thought about what happened when I flushed my toilet, where it all went. Um, so I think by and large, we do take it for granted. I think the fact that most of it happens underground, you know, the transport of water happens underground and out of sight. And so we only see it um, in, in the uh, fixtures in our homes. So yeah, I think, I think that's, a, uh, that's a challenge. Where do we sit today in our region? Um, tough to say, and it probably varies um, water district to water district. I, you know, I, what I do know is um, by way of example, um, Newport, Aquidneck Island built a um, state-of-the-art water treatment plant a few years ago, and it's doing its job as far as I know. And at the same time, last year, the Department of Health and DEM came down to Newport and inform the city that um, the s series of ponds and reservoirs that are the water supply itself are polluted. So, um, and so polluted in some instances that something called cyanobacteria grows. And cyanobacteria, which is also known as a blue, is known as blue-green algae, um, it's toxic. So if people ingest it or come in contact with it, they can get, um, sores in their mouths, they can get uh, damage to their organs. Um, you know, things like respiratory problems or asthma, things like that get exacerbated. Mm. Um, you don't want to touch water that's contaminated with it. The ponds, some of the ponds at Roger Williams Park also have cyanobacteria. Some of the ponds and lakes in the state do too. This is beyond drinking water, of course. So let me, let me be clear, and I might, have, I might have daydreamed during our original conversation, but a long week. Do you watch all this stuff? across the state or are you just worried about the ocean water specifically? Well, we, we, we watch uh, the health of the rivers and streams um, and fresh water sources that flow into Narragansett Bay. It's okay. all one system. All right. We have to. And how much of our, remind me, how much of our water supply is coming from that area? From the watershed itself? Yeah. Um, and how much, I think a lot of people are not I mean, we turn on the tap. We forget where the money. money must, many of us don't even know where the money. The, I mean, where the water is coming from. Mm -hmm. But where's all the water coming from in the state of Rhode Island? So a large part of the water supply is the Situate Reservoir, which right. feeds okay. the city of Pro the wa Providence right. Water the Supply. The Providence Water system. Supply. They got their own yes. board. The whole big thing. So uh, I live in the East Bay. We get our water primarily from the Situate Reservoir as well, but we have a backup supply that's a series of reservoirs in lakes and ponds over in the East Bay into Rehoboth in Swansea, Massachusetts. Right. Um, Newport gets us water from a whole bunch of small ponds and reservoirs. Um, there's the Kent County water supply. I mean, it, it depends where you are. So it comes from, you know, ponds, wells, lakes, reservoirs. All right. When we come back, we'll ask uh, Topher about his thought on the overall condition. And I'm going to add a guest who's got his own thoughts on this and has some specific recommendations for you. Stay with us.
In a September 25th email to Governor Snyder, his chief of staff wrote, the real responsibility rests with the county, city, and KWA, referring to an area water authority. Dennis much more continued, but since the issue here is the health of citizens and their children, we're taking a proactive approach. Much more retired yesterday. Just days after that email, the governor announced the severity of the city's water problem after he said he received confirmation of lead contamination. Are these emails enough? No. Flint's former mayor, Dane Walling, lost re-election in November. There's too little here to tell. This is missing a, a whole year, and it's missing all the key public officials at the state level who were involved. When Flint started drawing water from the Flint River in 2014, the improperly treated water stripped lead from pipes. The city stopped tapping into the Flint River in October, and lead levels have gone down. But during an interview yesterday with Scott Pelley, Governor Snyder couldn't say what the current lead levels are. What is the number? Um, I don't have the number at the top of my head of the very latest data. And it varies by parts of the city. I would think that the governor of Michigan would have those numbers at the top of his mind right now. Until they're in a range that is considered safe, um, I don't actually want to get into the issue of by zip code or by street. President Obama addressed the crisis in an interview for this weekend's Sunday morning program. Once people figured out that there was a problem there and there was lead in the water, the notion that immediately uh, families weren't notified, things weren't shut down. Uh, that shouldn't happen anywhere. Uh, no kidding, Mr. President. Uh, joining the conversation is Steve Tadino, who's the owner of the Water Filter Company, a longtime friend and uh, client of the Dan York Radio Program. I have his equipment in my house, and he's got strong opinions on the water supply. Do you not? Very strong. Very strong opinions. So I want to include Steve in the conversation with Topher. I'm going to let Topher off the hook in the next segment because Steve's going to go hog wild. Uh, no, he's going to actually give you some <laughs> consumer advice on, on some things. But um, speaking of presidents and governors and all that kind of stuff, you at Save the Bay have asked our governor to do what? to uh, put before the voters a clean water bond, and that would be an investment in the infrastructure uh, for wastewater, stormwater control, and drinking water. Um, as we were saying earlier, we don't think about these things, but we need to continue to invest in them to make sure they're working well and they're, and they're also protecting public health as well as Narragansett Bay. What do you think about that? I think the, <laughs> I think the controls are they're fantastic if people follow them. If they follow them, and I think they can always use more controls on the water quality. Nobody pays attention to it. Nobody pays attention to the water department. Nobody pays attention. When I first started in this business in '86, you could just barely find bottled water in the supermarket, and nobody paid attention to their water quality. Now you can find bottled water everywhere, and still nobody pays attention to their water quality. You agree? Yeah, I think I do. I mean, it's just something people don't think about, and now um, we do. People just take it for granted that we get our water at the supermarket. They, do. they don't even know how long it spends in the pipes on the distribution network from when it comes out of the water treatment plant to their faucet. They just turn on the faucet and they drink it. And it's really frustrating to me because you have a police department and yet you have locks on your doors. You have a fire department and you have all kinds of fire apparatus and first aid stuff in your house. And you have a water department and you've got nothing. You just let whatever comes in the pipe into your house and you're just going to use it. It's an incredible concept to me, and all this stuff in Flint is completely unnecessary if you had your own point of use professional water filtration system. So whatever happens in the environment passes through the filtration system first before it passes through the consumer, and nobody would have to be in this position. Which is, we're going to focus on that aspect of it in our last, in our last segment because uh, <laughs> Steve's not only passionate about his product, but he's, he's passionate about the concept. It's, 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 it's about community. What, Tom, what, what, what is your overall take on, on Steve's thought that we don't police this stuff well enough? I mean, I know you guys are doing what you can. Is there some place between your nonprofit and, and by the way, save the river, save the ocean, save the bay, wherever you are in America, I'm talking about generally now, in terms of water supply protection and the kind of you know, regulation policing that goes on. Is, is there a gap between the good water advocates like you and the government agencies that can be bridged? Do we need to bridge it? Is there a safer process that we should be using I think for security there, and for health? There, there are certainly steps that can be taken by cities and towns with the support 
and assistance of the state and with groups like ours. So the, part of the reason we have contamination of some water sources around here is that we have things like fertilizer running off of lawns and farms and things like that into the river that causes algae to bloom. The algae breaks down and then all of a sudden we have really bad water quality. So there are steps that can be taken at all levels to, pre to pre prevent that from happening. It's a long, arduous process to educate people, make them aware of it in the first place, let alone act on it. Hmm. So um, this is not a flip the switch and solve the problem issue, I would well, say. But let me add to that a little bit too. Sure. And you can check this out if you want to in the October 2015 Rhode Island Builders Association monthly magazine. The state of Rhode Island has 480 individual public water supply systems. Yeah, think about that. And they estimate, according to that article, we need um, $428 million to upgrade each one of those public supply systems, and it's going to take 20 years just to get them to today's standards. And these people are drinking these water. I think, too, I mean, we are a small state. We should be managing our water supply as a state. So all the, you know, there, we should. There, there are a whole bunch of water authorities around the state. They are acting independently. I mean, this well, is one of those this cases where we can get our house in order, I think. Sure, we've had this conversation about regionalization mm -hmm. on X number of levels. We never talk about it in terms of water. It really makes sense with water. Even when you have a boil water alert, the news media reverts back to buy bottled water or just you know wait till we get it fixed. They never ever turn around and say, okay, we had bacteria in the water, make sure you change your refrigerator filter. They, they never turn around and say, you know, if you had a good 0.005 micron ceramic element filter, um, $55, 60 for the element, you'd be able to drink the water. They never go to the filtration end of it. They always go to the bottled water and, and, and wait till we solve the problem. It's, filtration is never thought of as a solution, and it is the only solution. Is it the only solution? I still think we have to protect our source water as best we I can. I agree. And the other thing, too, is that we have, you know, we're an old state, you know, Bingo. colonial Bingo. times, so we do have pipes infrastructure Incredible that is very old and, and um, eroding. Yeah. So we got to take care of that. All right. Incredible variations of pipe. Uh, all right, so final word from you. We, Steve's going to give you some more filter consumer information. Um, what's the moral of this story from Flint and what we should be thinking about here? Wow, there are probably a lot of morals, but you know the morals pay attention and take preventative action so we're not cleaning up a mess. Who? I, Who should be paying attention and taking preventative action? Well, I th again, we're a small state. The state should. The cities and towns need to work with the state. But, but don't I, you think, now that I'm thinking about this, don't you think that we should have some state um, commentary about what the heck is happening in Flint, Michigan? Yes. Like, shouldn't somebody step up from an authority point of view and say, by the way, in case you're watching this news, we're okay, we're not okay, and here's what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. I think that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Understated but well stated. Topher, thanks for joining me. Thank uh, you, Dan. When we come back, this guy is going to tell you what you should be thinking about at your kitchen sink, your shower head, your dishwasher. I know the commercial. Stay with us. That is the website for the water filter company. And look, if this sounds like a commercial, I don't care because the commercial that I've been doing for the water filter company on the radio for such a long time has not only been uh, for the purpose of selling product for Steve's good company, it has, we've been teaching people about water in, in, in yes, your ads and you have been narrating your own radio ads uh, for years, uh, teaching people about their water supply and you are so passionate about it. And we've already gotten a, a glimpse of what you're passionate about. What what worries you most about the 480 systems in Rhode Island? Is it the 480 systems in Rhode Island, or what? What, what, several, what is it? Several things would be ranked number one. One of them is consumer ignorance. I, I don't understand why people just want to remain unprotected. They they well, have an option. Well, no, they I, have an I option. don't think people want to remain unprotected. Well, if, if you have the option of putting a good filtration system in your house, and yet so many don't, they they, they don't really understand where the water comes from. They don't understand a lot about the water quality. Heck, I, I have problems right, understanding so you, the water quality. So you're points, meeting my viewers for the first time. Yeah. Where, do the water, where does the water come from? And give me examples. Of what, what are you saying to customers or potential customers about what they should be thinking about where the water comes from? Well, it only comes from two sources. It either comes from a pond. It all comes from the rain, but it either comes from a pond or it comes from a well or it comes from a combination of blending both together. Right. 
And some of it is, and, and, and you know, with, with you know, Topher and the Sea of the Bay, there's all sorts of other water issues that we're concerned about, health and welfare. You know, we bathe, we swim, we recreate, we work, we do business, right. we do all those kinds it's of things. It's all interrelated, yes. But the, but the digestion of the water, I don't think people are saying, hey, listen, uh, crapshoot today, I think I'll drink some con potentially contaminated water and see uh, well, whether or not I get what, diarrhea. I don't what's think they are doing that purposefully. So it's unblissful ignorance, correct? It, it is, and when you use the word contamination, it's kind of a, I'm not exactly sure the right word to use with this, but, but contamination comes in many different forms. I mean, the, the EPA says that you, water is H2O, agreed? It's just H2O, it's not H2O plus chlorine. It's the only chlorine, thing I passed in chemistry, yes. But it's not H2O plus chlorine, it's not H2O plus fluoride, it's not H2O plus iron, it's not H2O plus. And all that so stuff is put into stuff, the water supply. Well, iron may be, it may be a natural element, but, but man puts a lot of chemicals into the water supply, and then the EPA comes out and says that you can have acceptable levels of contamination. They put that in stuff the in the water supply to keep the general water supply like, healthy. Right, they have to transport it to your home, and they have to get it to you as bacteriologically free as possible. They're not purification plants, they're treatment plants. They treat the water. So what happens at, so you could, if I had a water filter company filter from water filter company in North Kingstown, in Flint, Michigan right now, are you telling me that I would be worry-free? Pretty darn much. Yeah, pretty darn much. I could, I could have the neighbors over and saying, come on, load up. Depending on, the here, filter, yeah, depend, depending on the filter you purchased, yes. If you went out and got a CTO filter, a simple carbon filter like colitase and odor, no. If you had a terminology called reverse osmosis or, or a, a, a heavy metal filter, yes, because it would have taken out a lot of that lead. Now, if you take out 80% or 90% of the lead that's in the water, you have to understand that 80% of one leaves a different remainder than 80% of 100. So you have to figure out what filter you need based off the challenge that filter is going to face in order to make that water pure. If you ran but, into Flint, Michigan right now, uh, help, 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 help. I mean, are there companies like you running into Flint, Michigan right now saying, listen, we can at least save your home? Um, I don't know if anybody wants to chase that fire right now, but, you know, they should be because that is actually something they could actually do. But I don't know if they can do it on the scale. I mean, how do you, how do, you do it right. for a whole city? How do you do it? Uh, you but know, but, when, but when we do have the occasional boil water alerts and all that kind of stuff, what you're saying is if you have a home filter system, you are confident that those advisories will not, oh, yeah. be, will not be worrisome Oh, absolutely not. No, matter of fact, the filter you have in your sink under your house in your sink is sold worldwide specifically for bacteriological remediation. So when you get a boil water alert, you don't have to worry. Are you saying that the bottled water that you buy it's not necessarily even as pure as the water that gets filtered. It's unknown. I mean, you, you think you think of you think of a can of corn in a supermarket. You can read the ingredients in a can of corn, but you can look on a bottled water and you don't really know what it's been filtered for, what's in it, what's not in it. I mean, it's just water in a bottle. Not that it's bad. It's just, a song? You just, it's just <laughs> it could be. It sounds like a country <laughs> song. <doesn't it? laughs> Time in a bottle. Jim Croce, God rest his soul. But but you don't know. You don't really know what's in there. And and I ask people all the time. How do you how do you judge that Poland Springs is better than Crystal Springs? I mean, do you ever see anybody put a five gallon jug? But you would suggest because you only have a few seconds. Oh, it would, the debate wouldn't matter because if you had one of your water filters, the kitchen sink would win the debate. No. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. But do you ever see anybody clean the nozzle on a bottle water jug before they throw it in the cooler or clean the no. cooler? No, you don't. You just drink it. Water filter company. Waterfiltercompany.com. Get yourself a filter. Protect yourself. All right. Final word when we come back. Stay with us. I'm sorry. By the way, your hair and skin will feel better if you have the water filter because the shower is easier. It makes your rubby dub dub is easier. That's also part of the bit. It's true. Hey, we got a game uh, Sunday. As a Giant fan, I hate even talking about this because... Uh, Eli's brother is probably playing in his last game, but if you think that Mr. Brady is going to roll over, you're crazy. I think it's going to be a boring two-touchdown win. That's my prediction. And they go again and again and again and again. We got a new coach. Giants do. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the game. Be careful in the snow. Don't worry. Gina's got it all covered. See ya.